Deborah Neves. Occasionally, someone comes before me who just needs to vent. That was the case with Deborah Neves. She had a lot to get off her chest, and I was there to listen. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, those tickets my husband got before he passed away. I can remember each one diligently because he told me about it. My lack was not coming here before it to take care of it because we knew he was terminally ill. He was a veteran. He had di uh, ki uh, sugar diabetes for over 20 some odd years. We waited over 36 years to be together. I was with him for his last seven years of his life. One of the tickets was downtown outside of TD Bank on the side street. I went into TD Bank. We parked in the handicap zone, the first one. He stayed in the car. I went into the bank. I came out. There's a ticket. He's in the car with the handicap plaque. So I said, I'll take care of it. He ended up in the hospital. I was going to come in and fight that one. The other ones, one was right in front of my house. We moved. In March, there was still snow. We pulled the van out front so he could have access to the van because he always had a boot. He had a, a callus in the bottom, an ulcer that never healed. July 13, 2016, I was with him when he took his last breath. But the other one was on Broad Street. He was on his way to uh, dialysis. There was snow. He parked where he could walk into Beto's to go get his stupid food because he had to bring up his sugar before he went into dialysis. When he came out, there was a ticket. He told me, babe, I didn't know I had the ticket. I said, well, you got a ticket. Those are the three tickets that I knew of. The other one was because my son went to pick him up and he parked in a spot. He didn't have the stupid handicap. He wasn't, he waited for my husband. And because my husband walked slow with a cane and usually either a cast or a boot on his foot, they gave my son a ticket. Right now, my van, which is the only piece that I have of him, because when he, before he died, we did a GoFundMe. I'm still paying for that stupid van it's not stupid, but it's my only transportation back and forth to work. I live on disability, and I work a part-time job just to make it through every day. I'm lost. I'm still in, sorry, I'm still in uh, grieving for him. We just did a tribute to him last year by the Patriots and the Rolling Thunder. They came and did a tribute for him. He was a jokester. Anybody that came across his path loved him. On my baddest days, I know he's still with me, and I know this is part of him laughing at me and saying, babe, I'm still with you. Go face the judge now. <laughs> but son, uh, sad Friday, my son borrowed my van to go do something. I was getting ready to go to work. He calls me and says, Ma, your car got booted. Are you kidding me? I said, are you kidding me? I got to go to work. I had to get rides for Saturday. I owe money. I had to get rides for yesterday. I owe money. I'm supposed to be at work right now. I owe money. I don't get no money until Friday. My car is still booted. Hopefully they didn't tow it because I'm going to owe that too. But Friday when I called, they said it was too late in the afternoon to see you or come to court or if I didn't pay the money, which I don't have, I don't know which way to go. So my daughter, which is covering for me right now at work, told me, Ma, go to court. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> First of all, there's one thing that is abundantly clear, and that is that you loved him deeply, and he loved you, obviously. 
as you expressed, his medical condition was such that these tickets all revolved around him. The car was in a handicapped zone. It was tagged. He had an ulcerated foot. He was in the car. All of these tickets <clears throat> that the car placed on the car were the subject that would have been dismissed at that point if I had had that knowledge. So I am going to dismiss all the charges on the tickets. However, there is a boot on the car. The city pays a private contractor $100 for the boot. I can't even afford that. <clears throat> I'm going to make an exception that I really make. I'm going to waive the boot fee. The matter is dismissed. Good luck to you. Thank you. Frank Thank Mastrobano. You. Good morning, Your Honor. You have four overnight parking tickets. Yes, Your Honor. Are you living in Providence? Yes, Your Honor. I live, I reside on Hammond Street where the tickets were received. Mm -hmm. The car is not registered there, however. No, the car isn't. I'm, I've actually only been in Providence for a few months. I'm here getting a business off the ground. And to be perfectly honest, a <clears throat> permit poses a financial barrier for myself. Also, I reside in an apartment because I don't make that much money with a number of other people. The city's ordinance only permits two residents to have a parking permit. So essentially, my roommates and I would have to choose which one of us is going to be the one to get tickets. However, Your Honor, I have another argument to make that's completely aside from that and uh, much more empirical if you'd like to hear it. Essentially, Your Honor, uh, right here I have as printed the regulations of the parking program as accessed from the city's website just this morning on page 5, subsection D. Uh, all rules governing the parking regulations on a particular street shall be enforced as they are posted. Subsection A, the Division of Traffic Engineering will install signage where appropriate and indicate where overnight parking is permitted and or prohibited. There are no signs on my street, Your Honor. <clears throat> this is These are the city ordinances. Quite C extensive. City ordinances provide that parking is not allowed overnight in Providence. Everyone is presumed to know what's in the city ordinances. Now, I know, you, I know you didn't read the book, but after you received the first one, I can understand. When people move from another jurisdiction, I understand they don't know that they can't park overnight. I always give them a break for the first one. Sure. Sometimes I give a break for the second one. Sure. The third one, I never give them a break after that. I mean, at what point do you say, I really can't park overnight? Uh, what do you do? You run and you read the uh, city. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I you think if read the, city, the city ordinances. I did read the city ordinance. These that's, are these are right here. These are these are eyes accessed from the city's website. Am I am I supposed to come down and, and rent that book from the library? Is that where that's available? Look, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm I'm trying to make you feel comfortable. I'm just telling you that's not the city ordinance. This these are the city ordinances. They override that. That's sure. the city's website, right? Sure. Very simple. You got a parking ticket that says you can't park there. I understand, again, at the risk of being repetitious, you didn't know of the specific. Second time, didn't know. The third and the fourth time, you know it's $40. Sure. Well, Your Honor, how about the uh, ordinance that all outstanding parking violations issued on vehicle registration must be paid in order to obtain a parking what permit? You're do, what you're doing is you're challenging this. I'm going to set it down for trial. You can come back. The city solicitor will be here. You make your argument. You make his argument. And the matter will be set down for trial. Sure. Good luck. Thank you very much. All rise and hit subscribe so you don't miss the latest viral moments like this one. Share these videos and weigh in on the cases. You be the judge. Subscribe now.